part two. What we're going to do now is put the housing back onto the body of the brush and the housing uh, allows the needle to pass through and holds everything in place. So the first thing I'm going to do is screw this back on and we have this locking nut on which has already been pre-tightened so that we can actually pull down and hold back the spring casing while we drop in the trigger. And the trigger is very simple, very simple mechanism. It simply drops in one way, as you can see. What we don't want to do is end up something like that. And if you do this and it's sat high, as you put the needle in, the needle is going to hit the metal here and then bend the needle tip, which means your, your needle's useless. So if that, that happens and it looks like that, all you need to do is tap it so it drops back into place, as you can see. Now, this is locked, which means that it's too tight to put the needle in. All I'm going to do is loosen it off. I'm also going to check that the needle that's going into the brush is the needle that we want, and we did that before. And I'm going to check that there are two notches and two lines, which there are, so I know that that's a 0.6. That can now go in. And it just simply pushes in, pushes home, and then what I would do if I were you, rather than this bounce back, is I would just gently hold it in place and lock it finger tight with your finger. Check it to make sure that the needle is take, coming right the way back when you pull back. If you get this effect, where the needle sits still and the shank is going, can you see the difference? That means that the needle is not being pulled back from here, which means the brush won't work. So just take it home, check it, lock it, push back. Once you've got that in place, you can put the back of the brush on. That screws into place, and then you put the restrictor back on. It's as simple as that. And what the restrictor does, the more you tighten it, the less, the less you can pull the trigger back. In fact, to the point where you can't pull it back at all. So it's like a handbrake. Okay, so we'll just release that back off, and there it is. And that is how you strip down and rebuild your airbrush. Thank you very much.